Mary Godron. Mary Genevieve Godron was born on the 5th of January 1943 in the outback community of Moor, New South Wales, a working class community located near a camp of dispossessed Aboriginal Australians. She was the very first child of Edward and Grace Godron and the very first female Justice of the High Court of Australia. She always possessed a strong ambition in opposing all forms of discrimination and this came to be reflective in her judgments. Mary attended St Ursula's College in Armadale. She was ambitious, curious and described as a straight A student. A myriad of restraints, advice and obstacles further fostered her ambition to become a lawyer. She was a curious child who always wondered what the constitution was. In 1951, Everett passed through the town of Moore to campaign against the referendum at which was proposed by the Liberal government at the time. It was at this event that Mary asked what a constitution was and Everett explained. Mary compared the constitution to the Ten Commandments and Everett said that she could see the constitution as the Ten Commandments for government. Everett sent a copy of the constitution to Mary's mail that day where Mary waved the constitution around and told everyone that she was going to be a barrister. Solicitors at the time told Mary that she was aiming too high and girls don't do law, but rather she should consider a job at the telephone exchange. At the age of 16, Mary secured a Commonwealth scholarship to attend the University of Sydney in 1960, where she studied a Bachelor of Arts. She graduated her arts degree and had also commenced a part-time law degree, graduating in 1965 with a first class honours and a university medal for law, being the second female recipient to have received this. By the time she had graduated her law degree, she gave birth to her first daughter Danielle and was working full time. However, while she was studying, she attempted to obtain positions of clerkships but was not successful as many lawyers said it was against their policy to take on women as clerks. Mary was admitted to the New South Wales Bar in October 1968 after completing her articles of clerkship and practice as a barrister. She attempted to buy a room for herself in one of the barrister's chambers but was knocked back because she was a woman. She regularly argued before the Supreme Court of New South Wales and High Court in early 1970s, particularly in the area of industrial law. One of her most significant cases as a barrister was in 1972 where she successfully argued the equal pay case for the Whitlam Labour government before the Conciliation and Arbitration Commission. In 1974, she was appointed to this commission as Deputy President and became the youngest ever federal judge. By the time of her appointment, she had given birth to her second daughter, Julianne. Her most notable case on the Arbitration Commission was the case of maternity leave in 1979. Following this, in 1981, she was appointed Solicitor General for New South Wales and Queen's Council. She was the first ever woman in New South Wales to be appointed. In 1987, at the age of 43, she was appointed as Justice of the High Court of Australia and over the next 16 years, she was a member of the High Court, contributing her judgments to all areas of the law. She gave her judgments in a multitude of cases and many significant constitutional cases, including Marbo, Commonwealth First Hospital Contribution Fund, where she persuaded the courts to overturn the two previous High Court decisions, Miller v Channel 9, significant Tasmanian Dam case in 1983. Her style on the High Court is reflective through her judgments. Being exposed to all forms of discrimination, hers was highly against this and was seen to be an important part of the progression of the High Court. She is regarded as not particularly emotive in her writing style, but was best remembered for her Marbo case judgment, saying that Australia's past treatment of Indigenous Australians was the darkest aspect of the history of this nation. More so, her judgments reflect a high respect and consistent approach of stare decisis and adhering to precedent, and this can be seen in her judgment in Dietrich v The Queen. Despite the multitude of criticism and setbacks that Mary received in the development of her career, her contribution to Australian law has been impeccable. Ruth McColl, president of the New South Wales Bar, described her contribution as extraordinary with a humanising effect. He continued in saying that her strong views that she expresses in cases, especially ones involving discrimination, are influential and very important in the development of law in these areas. The Anti-Discrimination Commissioner of Tasmania, Jocelyn Scott, said that her contribution has been outstanding, both as a jurist and as an advocate and as a woman as well.
Mary retired from the High Court on the 21st of June 2002. And this was effective from the 10th of February 2003, leaving the court at the age of 60. Her good friend, Justice Kirby, held that her absence left the court with a different character, a more blokey place. Mary Godron was an inspirational, jurist figure, and her significant contributions are reflective in the Australian law today. She possessed diligence, resilience, and determination. She was a true advocate for those discriminated against, and a real-life inspiration for all women embarking on professional careers today.